10,000 subscribers, a milestone I'd never thought I'd reach by the time I did. Hold up, I just did this with 1,000. But anyways, way back last October 29th, I posted a dreadfully short video calculating the speed of this snail. This snail is the star of a DreamWorks film called Turbo. It's about this snail who lands in a car's liquid nitro or whatever and gains the power to move faster than a race car. But this video is truly lazy. I mean, really. I use one short formula to calculate the speed of this snail, so I'm revising it. I've done theory revisions before, just look at my Shrek theory and my Thwomp theory, but this truly needs a revision, and so, with minimal math, I'm going to discover what the top speed of this snail really is. What happens to this snail is that he lands in a liquid form of nitrous oxide, something cars use to speed up really fast. What's happening here is that nitrous oxide is a gas. So, to make it a liquid, you can either drop its temperature obscenely, or pressurize the crap out of it. Since it's room temperature, it's usually just pressurized. So, Turbo falls in it. Fun fact, he would instantly die. But as you'll see in a moment, dying from that would be the least of his worries. Anyways, he then sucks it into his shell, and gains the power to speed around all over the place. But could he really do something so far-fetched? Maybe. I won't spoil much, but DreamWorks obviously has some physicists working with the calculations to get these numbers so precise. Thanks to my last theory, we know the speed he goes in the movie, which is at most 250 miles per hour. But we don't know if that's his limit. He in fact never actually reaches his limit, and you're about to see why. When you pressurize something, more energy is stored. The more pressure, the more energy. This is uncreatively known as pressure energy and we can find out just how much energy Turbo stores in his shell if we know two things, the pressure and the volume of his shell. Research shows that NOS needs to be pressurized to 760 pounds per square inch before it can become a liquid at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If we change it to metric, we've already knocked out half of all we need. Now, the volume, or the space his shell takes up. It's an imperfect sphere, an ellipsoid, but still appears to allow a sphere formula to work when evening it out. Researching the measurements of a garden snail, we find that they are, on average, 1.3 inches wide. I don't want to get too mathy, but basically, if we know his width, we can find the total volume his shell can hold. 5.3 cubic inches. And again, converting to metric, we can now find the energy. Turbo holds in him an incredible 97 joules of energy. Basically, it's like he's burning 23 calories, if you'd like a better visualization. But honestly, we're looking for his top speed, so who cares about energy? But you see, here's the thing. Energy is conserved. For example, if you throw a fastball, it will eventually slow down due to air friction, and it might get hot, etc. All of these things are other energies eating away at the movement energy. Think of it like this. If you have a grapefruit or something, and you hold it in the air, it has a lot of potential energy. It can create lots of movement if you just drop it. And when you do, all of that potential ends up being converted into that movement, that kinetic energy, until it lands having used up all of the kinetic. And this applies to all kinds of energy. So since we know the pressure energy, it should be the same as our kinetic energy, and we can find out how fast the let loose pressure is pushing turbo. Oh, and by the way, when the nitro comes out of a car, it loses pressure and becomes really cold, so Turbo would freeze to death. And doing a force calculation, his shell would be experiencing nearly 4,000 pounds at all times thanks to the liquid compression. So, ouch. To find the kinetic energy is easy. All we really need is the mass of Turbo and his speed. But we don't know his speed, so we must rearrange a bit and solve for velocity. We know the energy, and all we need is mass. Simple. Garden snails weigh 0.4 ounces. Switching to metric and popping it in, we can find his top speed. Are you ready? Turbo's top speed is 285 miles per hour, a speed significantly faster than he does in the film. He can go faster than all of those cars. Amazing. But as I said, it's scientifically impossible. He'd drown in the likely poisonous liquid, and the pressure would crush him to death. Lovely DreamWorks, you've struck again with your on-point physics. You must certainly have physicists working on your animating team, but I'll almost guarantee not biologists, because this lovely little character you've invented would die. And so that's all I've got this time. 
I'd now like you guys to click in this top right corner to vote for what topic you'd like a theory on. I can't promise I'll make it, but I will look into it. And until next time, I'm the theorizer.